With us now is Jamie Baker, J.P. Morgan's senior airlines analyst and institutional investors Hall of Famer. That means you're pretty good at covering airlines, Jamie, and we always have you on to take us through the insights here. Thank you. Uh, you, you shouldn't be modest because your peers and investors have ranked you that way. So take us through why you think this thing still has the ability to take off even further. Well, you know, we went into Delta Investor Day this week pretty bowled up and got home Tuesday night, on time, by the way, even more convinced that the recent rally has legs. Just some stunning statistics that came out of Delta. You know, 40 percent of U.S. households now drive 75 percent of air travel demand, and their collective wallet has grown $27 trillion since 2019. Former road warriors like myself, who aren't traveling as much on our company's dimes, are spending 50 percent more on leisure travel because of the, the workplace flexibility that we have. And close to 1% of U.S. GDP is now being charged on co-branded Delta American Express credit cards. I mean, it's a statistic that I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, given its significance. So, I mean, Jamie, the, the revenge travel thing is something we've been talking about on air, and I'm sure with you with your clients over the last couple of years now. It shows no signs of slowing. It will eventually, but something that struck me in that Delta Investor Day presentation was the commentary about just how much premium seats or upgraded services yeah. and, and, and that sort of thing, whether it be a straight up fare class or a cabin upgrade or something like that, that's what's driving a lot of that kind of revenue, incremental revenue for a company like Delta. Is well, that the, something that you're seeing, by the way, not just with Delta, is it happening at other airlines? It, it is at the full service airlines that give customers a choice. I mean, a, a real evolution for me since I started back in the 90s, you know, back then, I remember my, my boss at Kidder Peabody explaining to me that a seat is a seat is a seat, and your posterior can't tell the difference. It was a commodity business, and that has changed. The industry has decommoditized. Passengers do have a choice, and to your point, and Delta really, you know, emphasized this, uh, they offer you a, a choice now. Uh, I mean, the premium market is the hot market going forward, and because of that strength, carriers like American Delta and United are doing much better at containing airlines that at one time played more of an agitating role. You know, the spirits, the frontiers, even the Southwest, don't have the same downward influence on airfares that they once did because of this, you know, expansion in the premium market. It's really something. Okay, so we just showed a graphic of your coverage universe and where you kind of see the favorites. I know that you're bold up on Delta. Yeah. You are also on United, and you are also on American, and not as much on a relative basis on a company like, say, JetBlue or Southwest. I can sense a theme, but I'd like you to take it for the record, why those three airlines versus a JetBlue and Southwest, and I kind of have a feeling or inkling why. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, for, for decades, uh, analysts and investors grew accustomed to the output of discount airlines being superior to that of full-service carriers. But that relationship has now inverted. You know, it's like Top Gun. I was inverted. American, Delta, and United have higher margins because they've got international franchises. They've got the loyalty kicker. And then unique to the discounters, you know, that discount model is very simplistic. It only targets a, you know, a, a very unique end of the demand curve, but it relies on access to capital, which is still available, but still, you know, more expensive, but also access to aircraft and access to pilots. And that is very challenging at the moment. And before we let you go, how important is international to the thesis here for airlines overall? Well, hugely. Uh, again, just because all of Delta's data is still very fresh in my head, I mean, that, that really is the future. And uh, again, workplace mobility, workplace flexibility uh, really allows travelers to, to get overseas. And certainly on a year-over-year -year basis, the impact is profound because this time last year, it was very problematic to travel overseas. Everybody still had to do a COVID test to come back in. You know, so we've really seen that pendulum swing back. And that's another reason that, you know, the revenue guides have been in the high teen percentage rates for American Delta and United, but the low single digits for the domestic-centric players. All right. Jamie Baker, a busy weekend of tracking travel ahead for you. Thank you very much.